right, here we're gonna go through our full length US Emily Step 1 exam, and we're up to questions 41 through 80. And remember, you can get these questions and the full length exam at zap70.com, where you'll find thousands of free US Emily Step questions. But just a disclaimer, I am still going through these questions and editing them, but over the next few months, you'll have an entire set of Step 1, Step 2, and Step 3 US Emily style questions. As for this exam, let's begin. Question 41. We have a 65 year old woman who presents to the clinic with worsening headaches. She has weakness on the left side of her face, so we have some head pathology. She denies recent trauma. There's papilledema. And imaging studies reveal a large irregular mass in the right hemisphere of the brain. So we're most likely talking about cancer or a tumor. Now here in this case, she dies. And we see an autopsy section in the image. We see it crosses the corpus callosum. So which deadly brain cancer crosses the corpus callosum? Glioblastoma, characterized by hyperchromatic cells with necrosis and microvascular proliferation. Here we see an image of the butterfly glioma as the glioblastoma is sometimes characterized by the butterfly glioma crossing the corpus callosum. And here's my little cute mnemonic for glioblastoma. For glioblastoma, it's lethal. There's infiltrative growth. It's oncogenic with microvascular proliferation, as in this question, and butterfly glioma. And from my YouTube video, we see the image of the glioblastoma with the butterfly on top. We also see the pseudopalisading in the histologic image in the image of this video. All right, question 42. A 28-year-old woman comes to the ED with hemoglobin A1C of 8.1% and she's put on an oral hypoglycemic agent, what's the mechanism of action of it? So when a patient is diagnosed with diabetes, first line agent is metformin. What's the mechanism of action of metformin? Decreased glucose production in the liver. As for the mnemonic, metformin, met for minimal glucose. An awful mnemonic that makes studying a little bit of fun. Now what's the most common side effect of metformin? It's actually nausea and vomiting. Most people think it has something to do with the kidney, but that's not true. Metformin doesn't really do anything to the kidney. It's just that if a person has kidney failure, we don't give metformin because it can accumulate in the body. Question 43. A 50 year old woman, blah blah blah, has this CAT scan over here. And we see the banana shaped hemorrhage. This, of course, is the subdural banana or the subdural hematoma. And here we see the banana. As for the mnemonic, subdural banana. And you can take a look over here. What I'm focused on is A, the altered crescent banana shaped hematoma or hemorrhage. Question 43. The genesis is studying a family with a history of a rare genetic disorder and they want to study DNA fragments. So, which technique would they use? Southern blot. Southern blot, as a fun fact, is named after this British biologist, Edward Southern. So, Southern Southern is actually a name. Northern blot and Western blot were named after the Southern. Southern was the first one to be named, and that was actually a person. As for what these tests are for, Southern is for DNA sequences, Northern is for RNA, and Western is for proteins. Question 45. A four-year-old man presents to his primary care physician with a complaint of hearing loss in his left ear, and we want to know which of the thalamic nuclei is responsible for this, and it's the medial geniculate nucleus. Medial is for music, as opposed to lateral, which is for light. All right, question 46. Because this question is so incredibly boring, I'm just going to get to the answer. Here we're talking about bounder effect. Bounder effect is when we have a small group of individuals that becomes isolated from a larger population and they establish a new population and then the new group has different genetic traits than the original population. So rare traits or genetic disorders may become more common in the new population as we can see in this image over here, the founder effect relevant to statistics. Question 47. Here we have a patient with tuberculosis. You want to know what's the most sensitive and specific test for diagnosing active disease. And the answer is PCR testing of sputum. As you can see in this chart over here, PCR testing of sputum has the highest sensitivity and specificity. Question 48. Here we have a patient with really high blood pressure. The 68 year old woman has very high blood pressure despite and now she has a left sided facial droop. So she developed a hemorrhage. What's the most likely cause of hemorrhage in a patient with extremely high hypertension? And the answer is there's degeneration of the small arteries. That is, it's hypertensive vasculopathy. There are microaneurysms affecting the small penetrating arteries, particularly in the basal ganglia thalamus and the pons, making them prone to rupture and hemorrhage. Question 49. Okay, here we have a 30 year old man presents to the clinic with current viral infections. And if you skip to the bottom, you have flow cytometry shows that CD4 T cells have an impaired ability to differentiate into Th1 cells. So which cytokine is reduced? And the answer is interferon gamma. And that's because interferon gamma is produced by Th1 cells. So if this guy cannot produce Th1 cells, interferon gamma will be reduced. Question 50. Here we have a man with asthma and we want to know which medication achieves its therapeutic effect through inhibition of the 5 lipoxidase enzyme, thereby reducing glucose trying production? And the answer is Xylutin. Xylutin is a 5 lipooxygenase inhibitor and that's how it reduces leukotriene production, thus potentially relieving the symptoms of asthma. All right, you can see that over here. Question 51. Here we have 
a seven-year-old woman who has a stroke, which is affecting her right arm and leg, and she has difficulty speaking and understanding language. She also has right-sided hemiparesis, expresses aphasia, and right facial droop. So this is a middle cerebral artery infarct, and because it's affecting the right side, we know it's a left middle cerebral artery infarct because it affects the contralateral side. This is the left middle cerebral artery. You can read, that, you can read about that over here, and here's a picture of the territory of the middle cerebral artery in red. Question 52. A 68-year-old man with a history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And we see he's having an MI as the troponin level is 5.42. And here's the EKG. Now I'll just give it away. The EKG, we see ST elevations in 2.3 and AVF. And that's a sign of an inferior MI. Inferior MIs are associated with an infarct in the right coronary artery. And that's the answer over here. The right coronary artery is affected, leading to this inferior wall MI. As we see in this image over here, 2.3 and AVF are associated with the inferior MI which again is caused by an infarct in the right coronary artery. Now just another high yield fact about the right coronary artery, inferior wall MIs. In these situations, you have to look out for very low blood pressure. But one of the most important things that you need to do is give fluids to the patient in order to raise the blood pressure because it's being lost. And of course, not to give nitro, nitroglycerin, as this could further lower the blood pressure. Question 53. A 35-year-old woman presents to her PCP with complaints of persistent dry cough, fatigue, and weight loss. There's bilateral hyalolymphadenopathy, and we see the biopsy over here, and we see the biopsy over here of the granulomas without central necrosis, so of course we're dealing with sarcoidosis. And in these situations, we see non-KCA granulomas in the lung tissue, sarcoidosis. What else do we see in sarcoidosis? We could see hypercalcemia, we could see uveitis, we could see erythema nodosum, and you can read about that over here here, the non casein granulomas. Question 54. A six-month-old boy is brought to the pediatrician by his foster parents because they're worried about his development. He's having less, he's having poor feeding and has had several seizures. He has his he has hepatosplenomegaly. And here we see the fovea with the cherry red spot. So remember, if you see cherry red spot, there are various things you could think of. For example, Tay-Sachs and Neiman Pick disease. But here we see hepatosplenomegaly. And that's how we could differentiate Neiman Pick from Tay-Sachs. And over here in Neiman Pick, we see hepatosplenomegaly, a deficiency in sphingomyelitis. As opposed to in hay sacs, which is the deficiency in hexaminidase A. You were talking about PIX disease. Neiman PIC. I have a little image of the PIC over here. The PIX for progressive neurodegeneration in the tail onset, cherry red spot, the Krauss cells are the foam cells, and sphingomyelinase deficiency. Question 55. A 62 year old woman who has difficult to control blood pressure. She started lisinopril two weeks ago and now her creatinine is elevated. This is very likely renal artery stenosis causing abdominal brute. Remember, patients with resistant hypertension who develop elevated creatinine after starting an ACE inhibitor may very well have a renal artery stenosis. And you could hear the abdominal brute. Some people pronounce it brewy, but I like to pronounce it brute because why make the T silent if you don't have to? And here we see the picture of the renal artery stenosis. Question 56. Just to make things simple, I'll give this one away. We're dealing with Gittleman syndrome, a boy with Gittleman syndrome, which affects the distal convoluted tubule, kind of like being on a thiazide. And I make a picture of that over here, where patients present with hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypocalciuria, and normal to low blood pressure. That's Gittleman syndrome, affecting the distal convoluted tubule. You have a better look at that image over here of this table, where I compare the various kidney conditions and which pharmacologic agents they kind of mimic, and which pharmacologic agents mimic these diseases. That is, for example, if you gave a patient lots of thiazides, it would mimic Gittleman syndrome. Question 57. A seven-year-old girl is brought to the doctor, the pediatrician's office, for a routine checkup, and she's tall, slender, has hypermobility. Eye exam reveals myopia and inferior dislocation of the lens. Remember, in Marfan syndrome, we see superior dislocation, and because if you want to look at Mars, the planets, you want to look up, as opposed to, in homocystinuria, we see the opposite, inferior dislocation, and that's caused by a CBS gene mutation, at least one of the causes of homocystinuria. In my poem over here, written by me, along with my partner AI, in a world where genes unfold, lies a tale of tales untold, homocystinuria a silent storm where CBS mutation takes its form. And you could take a look at the rest of this poem over here of homocystinuria. All right, question 58. And for the sake of time, I'm going to go a little bit quickly. Here we have a 45-year-old woman with a long-standing history of heartburn, and she has symptoms of what looks like Barrett's esophagus. What histological changes will we see? columnar epithelium with mucin secreting goblet cells and the image isn't working over here where we see the mucin secreting goblet cells in Barrett's esophagus. 59, a 72 year old man with a history of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and hypertension basically comes in with symptoms of pulmonary embolus. Pulmonary emboli. So what physiological changes will we see? 
we're going to see ventilation per fuse and mismatch. That's what we see in pulmonary embolus. And again, the image is not working so well over here. We could read about that over here, the pulmonary embolus, where the ventilation or the alveoli are ventilated but not perfused. Question 60. Where a seven-year-old man expresses concern about taking another medication, saying, I already take so many pills and I worry about side effects. What's the best initial response? Sounds like you're worried about medication overload. Let's talk about your concerns, i.e. validation and open discussion about the concerns. You can read about that over here. 61. A 33-year-old woman at 36 weeks gestation with sudden severe lower abdominal pain and bleeding. There's a low lying placenta and a blood clot behind this placenta. What's the most likely diagnosis and the most, and the most urgent next step in management? So here we're dealing with a placenta previa with abruption and emergent C-section. That's what the low lying placenta is, the placenta previa. And you can read about that over here, placenta previa. Severe low abdominal pain and bright red vaginal bleeding have to go for emergent C-section. Question 62. A 24-year-old woman presents to the clinic with complaints of fatigue, muscle cramps, and recurrent infections. She has elevated ACTH and elevated PTH. Actually, I didn't mention at the beginning of the question. She has candidiasis. This is a very rare disease that I actually saw in my third year rotations. This is caused by a deficiency in autoimmune regulator air gene. As in autoimmune polyendocrine syndrome, there's a mutation in air, and this results in a failure to eliminate self reactive T cells, leading to autoimmunity. And we see this chronic mucocutaneo candidiasis hypoparathyroidism. So the question actually should have been low parathyroid levels. This is hypoparathyroidism. Question 63. Here we're addressing a patient with a diuretic causing hyperkalemia, i.e. a potassium sparing diuretic such as spironolactone. And we want to know which part of the nephron is affected by spironolactone. The answer is the collecting duct, the distal tubule, the collecting duct. That's where spironolactone has its effect. Again, I wish I could show you this picture, but for some reason it's not working. 64. A six-year-old man with non-Hodgkin lymphoma develops ringing in his ears and difficulty hearing. We need to know which cancer medication causes these symptoms, and that's cisplatin. You can see it causes loss of hair, causes sound loss. Cis, the S, is sound loss ototoxicity, and you can read about the other part of the mnemonic over here. 65. A 55-year-old woman with multiple sclerosis has demyelination. What's causing the slowed nerve conduction? And it's caused by failure of action potential propagation at nodes of Ranvier. This is a physiology question relevant to multiple sclerosis. And you can take a look at the main symptoms of multiple sclerosis over here. 66. A 10-year-old boy is brought by his parents to the ED with severe abdominal pain, and he has symptoms with dark urine, triggered by infection. This is G6PD deficiency, impaired glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase activity, where we see Heinz bodies and bite cells, and it's X-linked recessive condition. That's why we see it in boys. All right, you can read about that over here. It's also called favism, as well as hereditary non-spherocytic hemolytic anemia, because of course we don't see the spherocytes. 67, a seven-year-old woman with a history of hypertension protects in the clinic with two-week history of progressive weakness and clumsiness, and she has a brain MRI revealing a single well-defined lesion in the right frontal lobe, and she has diminished left arm, arm and leg reflexes, and she has deep tendon reflexes diminished in the left arm and leg. Long story short, this is a lateral cord corticospinal tract defect. An image over here, the point is the lateral corticospinal tract affects the voluntary muscular movement of the contralateral limbs. Question 68. A 70-year-old woman is brought to the ED after experiencing sudden onset weakness in her right arm and leg. This question is asking about Chiari 2 malformation, which is almost always associated with a myelomeningocele, and it's characterized by caudal displacement of the cerebellar vermis brainstem along with fourth ventricle, as we can see in the image over here. Question 69. Here we have a patient with pulmonary symptoms, and sputum culture shows these budding cells, a mucormycosis, this is coccidioides. That's why it's affecting this patient who lives in Arizona, as coccidioides affects Arizona and California, the west of the U.S. Coccid is this mnemonic over here, and you can take a look. Here we see the oval-shaped spherules. And don't forget the desert bumps or rheumatism, the erythema nodosum or arthritis, which we may see in coccidioides. Question 70. Here we have ectinic keratosis, topical 5 fluorouracil What's the mechanism of action of 5 fluorouracil And it prevents DTMP from being formed. And that's how it's good at treating skin cancers, or well, cancers, as we can see in the picture over here, which treating this skin cancer. Question 71. Here we have a patient, a 16-year-old, who expresses feeling depression. How should the physician manage this situation? So not necessarily to tell the parents directly, but to explain the patient the importance of involving a trusted adult, i.e. a parent, and develop a plan to inform his parents. That is, we want to balance trust, but also we really do want to involve the parents because we're dealing with a minor. 72. Here we want to know in a patient with hyperglycemia, how will the kidneys be damaged? Glomerular damage. That's how we see the Kimmelstein-Wilson nodules. This is 
is diabetic nephropathy. Question 73. He received this irregular shaped uterus with multiple nodules and these other symptoms cutting the chase over here. We're dealing with world bundle of smooth cells with varying degree of cellularity, i.e. lyomyoma or fibroids, which you can see the various types over here. Question 74. Here you're doing the 62 year old woman who develops a change in her personality. She becomes less inhibited in her social interactions and her personality. We're dealing with Pick's disease, i.e. frontotemporal dementia, which has generally an earlier onset than Alzheimer's. And there's atrophy of the frontal and temporal lobes, as you can see in the MRI images over here. 75. We have this man who acts trying to get lots of attention. Remember, it's not just women who get histrionic, it's men too. Histrionic personality disorder. Differentiated from narcissistic because we don't see a self-centeredness as much as we see a burning desire for attention. And here we see a mnemonic, the weird, wild, and worried for clusters A, B, and C. And you can take a look. Here we see in red, histrionic. Excessive emotionality and tension-seeking behavior to be the center of attention. 76. Just to cut to the chase, we're dealing with mesenteric ischemia. We see an elevated white blood cell count and lactic acid levels that are elevated. In this woman with severe onset, diffuse abdominal pain. And we can see the mesenteric ischemia over here with inflammation of the bowel. 77, a nine-year-old boy with recurrent bacterial infections. He has low IgG, IgA, and IgE and elevated IgM. So what's impaired? The CD40 and CD40L on T-cell interaction, the CD4 on B-cells and CD4L on T-cell interaction. That's leading to this elevated IgM, hyper-IgM syndrome. And here you see that interaction. 78, we have this woman with clots and miscarriages, not antiphospholipid because we see a resistance to activated protein C. This is factor 5 light and mutation, where we see clots, obstructive veins, tenderness, and spontaneous miscarriages. 79, here we have a blockage affecting the foramen of Monroe, and so CSF would be blocked immediately before the third ventricle. Know your ventricles well, they're pretty high yield. Here we see the third ventricle, the lateral ventricle, and the fourth ventricle. And our final question in this set, we have a patient basically with bacterial meningitis. We're going to see cerebral edema and increased intracranial pressure. That's what causes death in bacterial meningitis, and that's why it's so dangerous. So we must treat it with antibiotics. Here we see a nasty picture of that bacterial meningitis. Let's get away from it because it's so incredibly gross. Okay, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, zap70.com is where you can get these questions. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.